I'm gonna date myself a little bit here. Who remembers back in the day going to their local Kmart or department store, heading straight towards the World of Nintendo sign, and checking out whatever the latest and greatest games that they may have had in stock were? I mean, definitely that's one of my fondest childhood memories, and that's actually kind of why I designed and 3D printed this World of Nintendo sign coming to my website soon. Always wanting to kind of recapture that. I'm looking, you know, I'm always on the lookout for new games and new ways to collect games. And one of the things that I've found that I really, really love has been Video Games Monthly. And what this is, it's a monthly subscription service where you can get anywhere from three to 10 retro video games delivered right to your door. And the beautiful thing is they do the game hunting, they do the searching, and they ship it all to you. And this is not a rental service like what Netflix used to be, where you get it, you send it back, or like Gamefly still is now. They send you the games, you get to keep the games. Let's check out what we got here in this month's box because quite honestly, this is kind of a heavy box. Let's go take a look. So the way that I do my video games monthly unboxing, pretty simple. You see the games at the same time I do. So it is a blind draw that we all get to see the surprise at the same time. So let's see what we have in here. We have some bubble wrap. Underneath the bubble wrap we have, we have something. Feels like a game case. Feels like, what is this? Can't quite tell what that is. I've got $20. Okay. So something in here supposedly is worth 20 bucks. Uh, let's see here. We have the, oh, by the way, I do have to mention, they have updated their boxes. I do like the new, uh, the new box art here. Uh, we hope you like your latest box. It is a one-up, so that means what we subscribe to is the three games per month plan. There's actually a fourth game in here, so it's like buy three, get one free. So let's take a look at what we have in here. And feels like a Super Famicom. Super Famicom and two disc cases, so let's grab the first Super Famicom. Okay. This is cool. I've never heard of Snoopy's concert before. Um, I am a huge Peanuts fan, and I'm going to love this. Uh, even if it's a crap game because it's the Peanuts, I'm going to love it. So uh, we will pop up the price for you right about there so you can check and see what it's worth. We'll open this in a little bit, check out the condition of the pins. Let's see. Next up here, $15. So I'm wondering if they're saying this should be $20. $15 for Super Tetris 2 Bombless? I've never played that before. I've never even heard of that, so very interesting. Again, we'll pop up the value on screen. We'll take a look at the insides here in just a little bit. I am looking forward to that. This next up is a cased game. Oh, dude. Uh, my youngest was just watching The Incredibles earlier today. I've never played this. Um, and The Incredibles for me, I think is an extremely underrated Pixar movie. Um, the thing that I've always thought is funny too, if you look at Frozone, uh, he's Elsa. He, he just is. I want my standalone Frozone movie. Ooh, it is complete complete too. So we've got the, um, the actual instruction booklet there along with the manual. Uh, the disc itself, let's take a look. Looks really good. See, what, uh, what I look at a lot of times too on the discs, they run these through like a disc polisher. Um, I wanna make sure that I don't have to do any additional cleaning on here to get any of that polishing agent off because you definitely don't want to get that in your system to follow up the work. So, um, great looking game. We'll check out the value here in just a little bit. And let's see what our fourth game is. Oh, wait, we got something else here. What do we got? Feels like a pin. It is a Floydomania pin. Very cool. Now, one of the things we love our boy Floyd. I'm going to pop this up on screen, what I am designing for him right now. Um, wait a second. So the pin is like spun in here somehow. It should go that way. There we go. Um, so I am actually designing a new LED light box for these guys to have at conventions. Uh, here you can see it on screen. It, very similar design to what I did with the World of Nintendo sign. Um, I made one for him last year and gave it to him at Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, this one I will give him some point later on this year. And our final game is the Namco Museum, which I actually have this. This is an important thing to remember to go through and update your library. I bought this probably back around Black Friday. Ah, came from a GameStop. That's hilarious. Um, 
So this is also complete with, there's the manual. This actually even, even has the uh, registration postcard. I just wanna see if it has, it hasn't even been filled out, that's cool. I was wondering if we might see Game Player of the Century Billy Mitchell's name on here. This one does have a little bit of that polishing material around the center. Um, easy fix for that is just take like a microfiber cloth and touch that up. You can also just take like a um, uh, cotton swab, a little bit of water to clean that off too. So I will clean that up a little bit before we go ahead and play this. Now let's take a look inside. I just want to see how clean the pins on these systems are and show you if you ever need to get into a Super Famicom cartridge, how you do it. So a funny thing happened on the way to show you all how to open up these cartridges and to service them. My camera crashed and I lost that footage because it corrupted the files. So uh, you're going to catch this kind of mid-process on here. So uh, we have actually the, um, the Snoopy's game here is already out and we have it cleaning with a certain type of cleaner I'll tell you about in a second. So. What I'm doing here before we put these in our system is I'm cleaning up the pins just to keep gunk, crud, and corrosion out of our system. And to do that, I am using what is called a one-up video game cartridge cleaner. And what's nice on these, there's a fluid side and a dry side, and you can just use isopropyl alcohol to wet the fluid side down. You put the uh, cartridge cleaner into the cartridge, just run it back and forth like that, and like so and then flip it around to the dry side to do the same on there and the same on there. Now one of the cool things as you can kind of see here too, if you're a YouTuber, you can actually get custom uh, one-up cards made as well. Give us a call, shoot us an email, we can get you set up with that. Oh, when I say us too, I do work for one-up cards, so uh, just letting you know that. Otherwise, the standard card looks like that on one side, that side, or that looks like that on the other. So. While you see this one here in pieces, what I like to do in these videos is actually open up the cartridges so you can see the inner workings. And if you ever want to see the inside of a cartridge to do so, you need what is called a 3.8 millimeter game bit or security bit, uh, at least on Super NES, Super Famicom, NES games. Some NES games actually use uh, like a flathead screw. Um, Genesis games use a 4.3 millimeter, I believe it is. So once you remove those screws, you can pop the lid off. Now one thing, when I opened this up the first time, when I tried to record, I did notice that this part of the casing was actually broken off, and that would actually go right about, let's see, it broke off, put the pins up there, uh, broke off from there. So essentially what I could do is I could come in here and use, I call it CA, most people will call it, um, Gorilla Glue or Crazy Glue or something like that, and I will try to glue these pieces back on here. The reason why this is important is this index here and that index there are used to go ahead and align the cartridge in the casing to make sure that it goes into your system properly. Um, looking at this one, and I have cleaned it already, but the pins, as you can see, these pins are really, really beautiful looking. Um, and really I ran the one-up card through just as like preventive maintenance, it really didn't need it. One thing I was not expecting was the fact that it does have a battery backup. If you're ever finding that your games are not saving data anymore, you can actually get replacement ones of these with the tabs as you can pop those up. I'll do a video at another point in time kind of showing you how to do that. And here you can kind of see how this will line up there and on uh, you there and there, kind of sort of why this tab is important because without it, the game can just slide up like that. Um, I'm kind of bummed to see this, but it's one of those things too that I'm looking at it. I'm gonna pop that out real quick. The fact it is the back of the cartridge, I may actually just be able to 3D print a new one of these and be good. Otherwise, if I've got a game that I know is no good, I can pop off the back and use that to replace this. But I am, um, I'm very happy with the condition of that Super Tetris 2 Plus Bombless. And then we're gonna just go ahead and put the halves of the cartridge back together. Maybe, kinda try to. The fact that the tab is broken off, I'm sure is 
Going to give me some extra challenges. There we go. There we go, back together now. And then when you're putting a cartridge back together, I cannot state this strongly enough. Before you start threading in, unscrew a little bit. You'll feel the screw take a set and then screw it in. What that does is it's ensuring that you are threading into the existing threads, existing threads, easy for me to say, and not cutting new ones. There we go. You'll hear kind of a click too. So there is Super Tetris 2. Now let's take a look at the Snoopy game because this has been soaking in what is called Bright Boy because the pins were quite gross. They already look quite a bit better than what they were. Um, and the reason for that is if you take a look at the cotton swab that I used. Lay off the cotton, you swab! One of my favorite movies from the 80s. Um, it's already pulled some of the gunk and dirt off. This is Bright Boy here. This is, uh, I'll have a link down below where you can get this through Amazon. It is a metal polisher similar to a Brasso. We found this back in the day racing radio controlled cars. Um, what's nice about this, it doesn't leave that powdery residue behind like say a Brasso will. What we found in RC as well is it didn't inhibit current flow, it actually helped current flow. So um, I have never had a game not work or work worse because I used Bright Boy on it. So what we're gonna do, I've got a clean cotton swab here and I'm gonna take our broken plastic piece and I'm just gonna set it behind there on my tray. I'm gonna take this and all I'm doing is I'm wiping off what I've already applied. And this one looks like I may have to do a second application anyways, so I can show you how to do that. I mean, and I am pulling some off. I'm, I'm very happy to see that some of that gunk is coming off, and I'm glad to see, well, I'm not surprised to see this excessive or additional wear and dirt on this one compared to the Tetris game, just owing to the outside of the cartridge. Uh, I'll give you a look at those here in a second because, um, the outside of the cartridge tells a lot of the story. So to apply the bright point, I'm going to put a little bit more on. We're going to do a second coating here because especially on the outermost pins, I'm seeing some additional like carbon buildup on here. Now we're going to flip it over. A little bit there. A little bit there. And we will do another little thin bead and grab a, the fresh side of this cotton swab. All we're doing is we're spreading it around. This is just an application. This is not, I'm not cleaning at this point. You can already see here some additional gunk that I've gotten off from that, just cleaning. So that blue on there, that's like oxidation. That's bad. That's what we're trying to keep out of our system. Um, so I'm gonna let that sit there for a moment. That's, that's actually the original one that I used to clean. I thought this was, I grabbed the wrong one. Um, but taking a look at the outside of the cartridges too, you can really see the tail of two cartridges where you know the Tetris 2, that brighter gray, this has a dingier color to it. Um, a lot of times, the reason behind this is they have an additive in the plastic to help make it flame resistant or um, more flame resistance, I, I guess I would say. That's why you see some Super Nintendos really yellowed. Um, a lot of times too, this may have come out of a house with a smoker as well. Uh, so it really does kind of tell the tale of the life cycle of both of these cartridges. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to grab a clean cotton swab now. And we are just going to wipe off what we just applied. It doesn't take long to, to go ahead and do that. And all we're doing is, again, we're trying to keep this crud out of our system. There you can see on the cotton swab there what it's already pulled off just on that little bit of a pass. And those outer pins do look much better now. A little bit more coming off there, flipping around. That one there is just extra sort of dingy, but you can see what it's pulled off, which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, there's some more coming off, which is great. I'm gonna do one last pass here. I'm happy with how this looks as far as just with the Bright Boy. Now again, we're gonna take it and use our 1UP card. And this has already got fluid. You can see how it's kind of shiny and reflective on there now. It still had some leftover fluid. 
All I'm doing now is I'm removing any additional bright boy that may have been on here. And then same thing with the back. And then take and use the dry side and do that guy there. And whoop, do this one here and I'm gonna do the other side again because it did touch the table and just making sure that uh, we, we keep any dirt and crud off of here. Okay. Now it's also important that when you go and put this back into the cartridge, you don't touch the pins after you've cleaned it because you don't want to get your oil uh, from your hand or whatnot on the cartridge itself. If you ever forget the orientation that the cartridge or the, the PCB needs to go into the cartridge, it will only go in in one direction, um, which is a terrible band, by the way. Kind of put the top of the cartridge, get the, the hooks lined up with the holes. And then one final thing I do want to, I don't know if this will show up or not, but these were pretty grody here too. Uh, what I'm going to do is off camera, I've got some uh, Magnum Force 2 electric motor cleaner. I'm just going to spray those off to get the, the gunk off the top. And that's just, you know, dirt crud and fuzz that's built up from, built up from over the years. And just like on the Super Tetris 2, we are going to unscrew slightly. There, it took a set. Screw it back in. One thing of note on that Magnum Force 2, it is plastic safe. So um, I have no problem, even though it still had a little bit of, of that on the screw, um, I have no problem putting that into the cartridge, still a little bit damp. Oop, come here, you. There we go. And same thing, we're gonna just spray this. And this one I'm actually going to see if I can get some of that gunk off of there. Get that lined up. Took a set, screw her back in. And now we are all set to test this out. Um, you know what? I might be okay on this one. Ah, uh, no, it does move. So, yeah, we are going to have to. I was hoping that the outer perimeter where it supports the PCB would be enough to keep it in place. We're going to go ahead and we're going to either 3D print, glue, or just get a replacement back on here. But let's go ahead, let's add everything up, and let's see what our value was this month. So totaling everything up here, we're over $50 in our return on investment. That is a great return on investment. Um, you know, we're looking at you know the Nameco Museum. This is the least expensive game here at eight bucks. Uh, we do have The Incredibles, which was ten. I've never played this. I'm looking forward to playing that one. Um, Snoopy's Concert. Again, as a Peanuts fan, I can't wait to play this. Kind of a bummer about the broken nature of the cartridge. They, they couldn't have known that. There's no way they could have known that. I've already. I know my solution. I'm going to just replace the back part of the shell and we'll be good there. But this is a $21 game, great value, and $15 for Super Tetris plus Bombless. I have no idea what Bombless is, but I'm looking forward to checking it out. Now, the beauty of this for Video Games Monthly is, again, the fact that you can get as many or as few games from them a month from three to 10 games, depending on your budget. So, and you can start and stop at any point in time. There's no commitment. Perfect example, myself, because I normally go to conventions during the summer from July or June through August, I generally, I'm not getting boxes for those three to four months. Sometimes I wait until September to go ahead and start it up again. Um, I don't need to get games from VGM during those months because I'm out game hunting myself. But for right now in the middle of winter, ain't nobody going nowhere. <laughs> Just after Christmas too? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped out. Um, but this is a good budget friendly way for you to go ahead and get commons in a lot of ways, but also like looking at what we have here, these are some pretty unique import games here for the Super Famicom, and I love collecting imports. Now, if you want to go ahead and sign up for Video Games Monthly, I'll have a link down below in a pinned comment, you can go ahead and do that. If you also want to pick up any of the one-up cards that I showed you, I will have those linked for you as well down in an affiliate link in our comment section as well. Um, great month. 
Uh, these are all games I want to and will play, and I'm looking forward to checking out. But these are just my opinions. Let me know, what did you think of my box this month? I think this is pretty darn cool. Uh, now, if you do want to check out some of the other video games monthly box unboxings that we've done, I'll have those linked for you right up there. Go ahead, check them out. We have got some really cool stuff over the years.